Hello, Math 14603. This is the, I'm Steve Salwin. This is the first of my recorded lectures. Uh, this is about 11.1 .1 sequences. You'll notice we're kind of changing the order of topics compared to what your syllabus was and where you were before. Um, that is uh, partly in the interest of getting through what will probably be less material um, in an efficient manner. Uh, it's also, honestly, just for my sake, to get you in sync with my class, my classes. Um, so bear with me. And in general, please bear with me. This, these are going to be really unpolished. There's going to be lots of mistakes and errors and uh, lots of things that don't make sense as I figure out how to do this. Uh, please be patient. Uh, generally, these lectures are going to take place like this one. We'll be watching a text file, which I will also make available as notes for this lecture, and I will kind of mark it up with underlines and things like that. Uh, I was supposed to be demonstrating there with underlining and other kind of markups. As I talk, you will also notice that from time to time uh, I will have written examples, and then I will have bulleted examples, usually the first one or sometimes two, I will go through the answer on, and then there will be a number of bulleted examples that I don't go through the answer on. Those are meant for you to work out yourself so you get a sense of whether or not you've done it correctly. We will see how best to go over those. Uh, it might just happen in a kind of office or hours format, it might happen in a more structured format, might not happen, um, but uh, that we will figure out as we go along. So this lecture is going to cover kind of the first half of section 11.1, .1, which is sequences, totally new topic. Um, it won't for a while relate to anything we've done before except very distantly. So what a sequence is in mathematics is an infinite list of numbers. So here's one, one, a quarter, a ninth, a sixteenth, one twenty-fifth, and so on. Of course, it's an infinite list, so we can't actually write it out. So we'll have dot, dot, dot written on there. Um, and the idea is that you should be able to figure out the pattern and guess what the further numbers are. There's a rule generating these. And we'll talk about that rule, um, but for now, we'll just think of it as some numbers followed by dot, dot, dot to indicate that it continues. So I need to talk about some notation. Um, the location of each number on the list is called its index. We usually, when we refer to the index, we use numbers from kind of the middle of the alphabet, like M, N, I, J. Um, and then the actual numbers are called the value or the term. So in this sequence that we were just looking at, um, the value at index 1 is 1, the value at index 2 is a quarter, the value at index 3 is a ninth, and so on. Uh, for the time being, we'll start counting our index at 1 for sequences. Later on, it will often be handy to start counting the index at 0. So the 0th term, the first term, the second term. That will be kind of annoying, but it will be worth it for the benefits. Um, values are usually represented by variables late in the alphabet, like x, y, z. Uh, if I want to talk about the value of, say, the fifth term, the index 5 term, I would say I call it x sub 5. So x tells you it's the value, sub 5 tells you the value at index 5. So in this sequence up here, x sub 5, the fifth term in the sequence is 1 over 25. Um, so, of course, if you're watching the pattern, you can guess that x sub 6 is 1 over 6 squared, or 1 over 36, and x sub 7 is 1 over 7 squared. If you've noticed that, you've certainly seen the pattern. Um, how do we write that pattern? We usually write it like this. We say that x sub n is equal to 1 over n squared. So the left-hand side is naming the nth term 
and then the index is a variable, the right-hand side is a formula that involves n. So you plug in where your index is to find out what the value is. That's called a direct formula for the sequence. It's the nicest way to describe a sequence. We may not always manage that. And then sometimes we want to talk about the sequence collectively and we put curly braces around it and say the sequence xn. Okay, so two things I want you to be able to do is, one is if I write a direct formula for a sequence like zk equals 2k plus 1, notice I'm getting used to other indices besides n and other variables besides x. Uh, I want you to be able to just find the first few terms. That's pretty straightforward. When we plug in k equals 1, we get z sub 1 equals 3. When we plug in k equals 2, we get z sub 2 is 2 times 2 plus 1. z sub 3, I sorry, I switched from x to z. I will fix that in the notes z sub 3 is 2 times 3 plus 1 or 7, z sub 4 is 9, z sub 5 is 11. So this sequence, written in the kind of dot 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 formation, is just the odd numbers, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And notice, writing it out like that, you often see the pattern more clearly than the formula. Alright, so now you should try uh, these three. The second thing I'd like you to do is much trickier, which is to turn uh, the sequence written as a list to the previous uh, these three, they will help you and often into uh, a formula. So I'm going to give you two, a direct formula, I'm going to give you two examples and I'm going to give you a lot of tips. Uh, the first and most important tip, and this is true of all of mathematics, really valuable here, is if you're not sure how to write a formula, the, the most valuable thing you can do is write down a wrong formula, try it out, and say what's wrong with, with it. 90% of the time, if you do that three times, you'll have written down the right formula. Um, that both get you, that, that is important because your first guess is probably wrong, but it almost certainly contains a grain of truth. If you write it down and look at it and see what it does and see how it fails to fit, to, to satisfy what you need, so it fails to do the job, you will be able to fix it. Um, so here, uh, so another thing you can do is just kind of articulate the pattern as clearly as you can. So you can see in this sequence, one half, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, the next number is 5 over 6, then 6 over 7. You can see each time the numerator gets one bigger and the denominator gets one bigger. Really helpful thing to do when you're trying to write the formula for the sequence is to write the index next to each value. So 1 half is index 1, 2 thirds is index 2, 3 fourths is index 3, 4 fifths is index 4. You can see that always the index is in the numerator. What's in the denominator? One more than the index, the index plus one. So you can try xn is wherever you say the index, you put n. And if you say one more than the index or the next number, you're talking about n plus one. And if you try plugging in one, two, three, four into that, it is correct. But the most important thing is if you guessed anything there, you just looked at it and whatever came into your head, you guessed it and you wrote those answers down, it would probably have some helpful things and you'd be able to compare it to what you were trying for and fix it. Here's another example. The sequence two comma one comma a half comma a quarter comma an eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty second. What's the next term? It's one sixty fourth, right? Each time you take half of the previous thing. So one half is involved somewhere. Maybe your first guess was one over two n, and if you try that, you see it's too small, and it's also not decreasing fast enough. Um, in fact, almost anything you try at first probably isn't decreasing fast enough. Again, if you write the index over the value, um, 
And then here's the second trick. If the numbers you see fit a pattern, if you see 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, those are all powers of 2. Write them that way. 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th. So I've done that here and put it next to the index. Now you can see, I also noticed that the fractions I could write as 2 to a negative power. Now that you, you can see that the exponent is always 2 less than the index and then negative. So of course, 2 less than 1 is negative 1 and 2 to the negative negative 1 is 2 to the 1, so that makes it a little more confusing. But that suggests that xn is 2 to negative, negative what? 2 less than the index. That's n minus 2. If you try that, it works. Your thinking might have been different, and it might have gotten you a formula that looks different, like perhaps you wrote down 4 over 2 to the n, which works just as well. That's perfectly good. Of course, um, if you play around with the rules of exponents for just a moment, you'll see that these are equal. And there are lots of other ways that you could write it, and often different ways of thinking of it will get you different ways of write it. Those are all good. So now you can try these three. The first two you will find are pretty easy. The third one is a little bit tricky, and I'm going to point you back to your answers to, whoops, we'll find that uh, as you do problems, new ones will come up. New problems that you see uh, will, will come up and rely on the stuff you did before. Okay. So that's great, uh, but often it's not possible to give a direct formula. And often it's not very natural. You noticed in at least one of those examples that the simplest way to say the pattern was how to get the next term from the term you're on. So for example, in the sequence 9, 3, 1, 1 3rd, 1 9th, 1 27th, each term is gotten by dividing the previous term by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 divided by 3 is 1 3rd, 1 3rd divided by 3 is 1 9th, Something that tells you how to get the next term from the one before it, or the ones before it, is called a recursive description of the sequence. Um, you have to, since, since it tells you how to continue the sequence, you have to say how to start. So a full recursive formula for a sequence requires you to write the first term, and then how to get each term from the previous so if the one you're looking at is called xn, then the next term is xn plus 1. So typically we will write xn plus 1 as a formula of xn. Okay, so look at this. I'm going to write it in the next slide because unfortunately the slides split at an unfortunate place. So this formula, the recursive piece, you can think of as not one equation, but infinitely many equations. When you plug n equals 1 in here, you get x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 over 3. When you plug n equals 2, you get x sub 3 equals x sub 2 over 3, and so on. I really recommend that you literally do this and see that each time you write n, a different n, you get an equation that relates one term in the sequence to the previous because that's it's a sort of confusing idea. When you see it, it's very simple. Um, so that is a recursive formula for the sequence. It is not as useful as a direct formula. It's often all you can get. It's often way easier. And there are some very simple recursive formulas that do some very cool things. Here's an example. This is one of my favorite examples. Let's take the recursive sequence where x1 is 1, and then each term is half of the previous term plus 1 over the previous term. Okay, let's see what that looks like in the first few terms. x1 is 1, x2 is x1 over 2 plus 1 over x1. So I plug x1 equals 1 in, and I get 1 half plus 1 over 1, which is 1.5. 
x3 is x2 over 2 plus 1 over x2. Remember, x2 is 1.5. So that's 1.5 over 2 plus 1 over 1.5, which works out to 1.416, repeating. x4 is x3 over 2 plus 1 over x3. That's what that worked out to. x5 is x4 over 2 plus 1 over x4. And you can see a couple of things. The numbers are getting closer and closer to one particular value. In fact, if you keep going, you will need to have a calculator or Excel with lots of decimal places to even notice a change. It is approaching, converging on some value. It's not any simple number like 2 or 3. Um, you might recognize what it looks like. In fact, it's getting close to the square root of 2. One of the cool things about recursive sequences is it's pretty easy to write down simple formulas that approach or converge to an interesting number like the square root of 2. Here's another example we're going to see a lot of. This time, I'm going to start at index 0, partly just to get you used to it and partly because really is useful for this example. So I'm going to start at index 0. I'm going to start with the number 1. And each further number at n plus 1 is n plus 1 times the previous. OK, once again, I switch to x here. Uh, in the notes, I will fix that. z sub 0 is 1. z sub 1 is, we're going to plug n equals 0 in here. So we get 0 plus 1 times n z sub 0. So z sub 1 is 1 times z0, which is 1 times 1, which is 1. z sub 2 is 1 plus 1, or 2 times z sub 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Pretty boring so far. z sub 3 is 3 times z sub 2, which is 3 times 2 times 1, or 6. z sub 4, you multiply that by 4. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. Z sub 5, you multiply all that you did before by 5, and you get 120. Z sub 6, you multiply that by 6, and you get 720. You see that after a slow start, the sequence is growing very rapidly. This sequence of numbers, so you can express it generally as we multiply all the numbers from 1 up to n together, um, is important enough to get a name. It is called n factorial. You write it n exclamation point. The exclamation point is because of how rapidly it grows. Uh, uh, that formula, n factorial, product of all the numbers from 1 to n, and its recursive formulation, which I wrote here, are going to be really important. We're going to use it a lot. So get used to it. Here's some more recursive formulas to um, try out plugging into. And now here's a little bit of a trickier thing to do. Let's write a recursive formula for a given sequence. Here's the sequence 4, negative 2, 1, minus 1 half, plus a fourth, minus an eighth. You can see it's, see it's switching signs, and each time it's getting half as big. So a simple way to say that is you start with the number 4, that's easy, and then each time you're multiplying by minus 1 half. Minus 1 half of 4 is negative 2, minus 1 half of negative 2 is positive 1, and so on. So each time the n plus 1th term is the nth term times minus 2. Here are some more examples. Next time, I will start explaining about what for us is the major point of sequences, which is the limit of sequences. I'll see you then.